Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies and bringing you the third video in my Apex Legend series. This time we're going to be working on Wraith. Now, unlike the other two characters I did for Apex Legends where I created my own color scheme and just basically ran with it because I liked the scopes, I wanted one to be more militaristic, I wanted one to look more like my Krieg. This one with Wraith, I decided to stick as close to possible to her actual skin and try and follow that through to really great detail. So what I ended up doing is looking up um, like cosplay costumes and stuff like that so I can get some really high detailed images so I know exactly where colour is supposed to go and belts are supposed to go and all that kind of bits and pieces to try and make it as flush as possible. Speaking of Apex Legends, they are of course the sponsor of today's video, or should I say Glass Cannon Unplugged are the sponsors of today's video, who have managed to get the license for the beautiful new Apex Legends miniature game, which is currently live on Kickstarter. There are 14 days left to back it. It is already a 200% um, package. It's got half a million euro raise. So obviously there's a lot of support for this game. We can tell from these numbers that it's gonna be something pretty special and pretty cool. And I, for one, I'm already a backer and I'm looking forward to playing that game in the near future, whenever they send it to us. If you're interested in the game, it does have a few unique um, kind of elements to it that are I find quite unusual and I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that all works. First of all, 40 millimeter miniatures that come on display plinths. I love these plinth ideas. So the idea is you have a character and then he sits inside a little display plinth um, with usually a couple of extra gubbins on him. And that's actually used as your gaming tile. So that tile will sit on the side of the board. All of your cards will slot into the back of that. But also when you're not using the miniatures and not using the game, these plinths can be put on a shelf with your favorite characters and create this beautiful scene instead of it just being a single miniature on a self. So for me, that's one of the really big selling points and it's something I wish I got sent to do these reviews. I would really like to have painted up some of those display pins and show you exactly what I mean by them, but they are super cool. And if you check out the links below and take you to the Kickstarter and have a look at them, you'll know exactly what I mean. And uh, hopefully you'll be excited about them as well. It also has diceless gaming mechanics. No dice required to play a miniature game, which I find insane but I can't wait to see how all those mechanics work. And uh, I would love to know what you guys think of that in the comments below. Let me know what you think of Diceless Miniature Game. The other thing I like is the core box has absolutely everything you need to play, including characters, all the books, all the, the cards, everything like that, and including scenery. It has beautiful foldable card scenery, so you can have a, a gaming table worth of uh, stuff set up and ready to go pretty much straight out of the box. And when you're not playing it, it folds back up easily, it gets put back in the box to stay safe and protected for the next time that you play. So these things are beautiful features. And like I said, I will leave links to their Kickstarter below. Please check them out, show them some support. Not that they need any more, but uh, I think it'd be worth your time. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the video and paint up our Wraith. Okay, here is the beautiful sculpt that I get to paint up today. And like I talked about in the intro, I'm gonna try and follow along with her traditional colors as much as possible. So I'm gonna start with Black Templar. And Black Templar contrast is gonna be applied to quite a lot of the miniature. It's quite, um, it was quite daunting when I saw how much of the miniature is actually in black cloth and her black hair. Yeah, and I was scared the model's gonna to be too dark and not that interesting. But I think I managed to pull it off in the end. So you're just going to have to follow through with the process and let me know in the end if you think I managed to pull it off or whether I've ruined the miniature. The guys over at Glass Cannon very kindly supplied these miniatures constructed and uh, primed and zenithaled for me so it made my job a lot easier. So that's for exactly what paints they used to get it ready. I don't 100% know but I presume it was just a black and a white primer. Mago's purple was then used for her accent colour. She has a little bit of like a little vest or a little bit of body armor on her shoulders, a bit across her chest, some on her boots. And those are gonna go with that Mago's purple, which is really the only spot of color that shows through on this miniature. Taking my time and making sure I don't miss any of those bits because they are kind of really important. Gorgrin to fur was then used for all of her uh, straps and belts and buckles and pouches and all those kind of bits and pieces across the minute. She does carry a lot of equipment around her waist. So for those, I went in with the Gorgrin to fur, which is a nice, deep, rich kind of a leather color. It's a really lovely color to use for things like this. And I applied that all over. It's one of those nice stages because I've done black everywhere. I have to 
brown accidentally goes a little bit too far over it's going to hit the black and it's not going to show up at all so it was really good gargax sewer was then brought in and i used this for her boots and then she has a pair of i don't know whether they're extra like ammunition pouches at the back there's pouches on the back of her belt which are a different color to the rest and i decided to follow these up with the gargax sewer the gargax sewer is a very kind of blacky brown color it's really dark i did not want to do her boots in the same black color i thought it would be far too much but the gargax sewer is dark enough but also a different color to the rest and i think it worked a treat gullum and flesh was then used for her face she has uh, gloves on both of her hands so no need for uh, the golden flesh there at all and being careful not to hit her hair because at this point i couldn't remember what color her hair was and then i had to go back and check and realized it was also black so then i had to get out the black templar again i added a touch of water to the black templar for her hair and did a coat because i wanted it to be nice and thin and to be basically like a different tone to all the cloth which i think actually worked out a treat Lead Belcher was then brought in as the base coat for all of her uh, weapons. And realistically with this miniature, it was just her pistol, but she's also got a spare magazine and a pouch on her hip. So we did that with silver as well. And then all of the buckles and stuff that hold all those straps and stuff together, all got done with Lead Belcher as well as a little base coat. Now remember, this is the kind of ugly stage of the miniature. We are just starting to get the first flat coats on it. We will shade the miniature down with null oil. But what I did do is I didn't want a solid coat, so I mixed Nolan Oil 50-50 with water just to add an extra thin coat. And I applied this all over the miniature to uh, basically darken everything up. She is um, some kind of shadow operative kind of character. She's sneaking about doing her best. Um, if anyone knows a little bit more about the backstory for her, please share in the comments. I would like to learn a little bit more. You guys were super helpful with the other characters that I painted up. Um, and I feel like I know a lot more about them uh, now. So the same again, please. While the shade was drying, I did paint up her base. I'm not going to go into how I did that. Everyone's going to paint up their own bases differently, but I just did a nice clean looking base. Corvus Black was then brought in as my first layer color, and this was for all of the black parts. In the end, I decided not to touch the hair. I think the thin down Black Templar over her hair did a really nice job. It's left with a really nice result, and I didn't want to mess with it, so I highlighted everything that was black with the Corvus Black except her hair. As you can see, I'm taking my time getting all of the raised parts and leaving all the rest with the nice shaded down uh, Black Templar. It's hard to see what's going on because I'm currently highlighting black with a slightly brighter black. <laughs> but I promise you it is having an effect. I hope. No, it is my joke. Okay. From here, we are going to start working on that purple. And for this, we're going to go for the Dekyla Lilac. This is a nice bright purple color. It matches the tones that I could find of the armor she wears in the game. And I gave a very, very um, sparse highlight across all of her armor. If it is armor, it might just be her colored accent bits that she likes. But the panels that go down above her kind of bicep area, her shoulder and bicep area, makes it feel like it's like padded armor. So I'm going to stick with the idea that it is some sort of ballistic armor. Kevlar or something maybe. So the lilac color as a nice highlight makes the model pop a little bit, which I was quite happy about. I'm not usually one for really, really dark color schemes. I much prefer a little bit of color and life in a miniature. So this was a little bit of a challenge for me, but a welcome challenge. I had a lot of fun painting her up. She's starting to look like something now. Cadian Flesh Tone was then brought in as the first highlight for her face. I took my time with this, making sure to highlight the correct areas. Add lots of volume. And people will be looking at a 40 millimeter miniature's face a lot. So taking your time and getting this right, I think is super important. I then went in after that and did Kislev Flesh and gave this the skin and the face uh, even brighter highlight just on the very tips of things like the nose, cheek, chin, just to make it really pop. From here, it was over to Mournfang Brown where I got to bring all those belts, buckles and pouches up to a brighter color make them as an extra bit of the miniature that's going to pop off of that black. This only took a couple of seconds to do, but I think it made all the difference in the end result of the miniature. 
it is hard taking a concept like a video game sculpt shrinking it down to this design because things like little belts and straps can get lost in detail of miniatures at this size so you just want to take your time and get the bits that you can and if things can't be got won't be noticed then don't worry too much about them iron breaker was then brought in to highlight the metallic parts so the pistol and the, the clip in her belt and all of the uh, clasps and stuff were also done with very light touches of iron breaker just to finish it off a bit a pro acryl bold titanium white was then used and i dry brushed it across her hand which is covered and wreathed in energy once again i don't know why it is if anyone in the comments wants to give me an a uh, a quick rundown of what her powers are and why she would have purple energy spilling out of her hand i would love to know after the white dry brush was applied i then jumped over to a nice uh, lixion purple contrast color and applied that over those white areas to make it look as though she's got these purple glowing energy coming out of her hand it's a very quick step but it did actually add something quite nice to the miniature another kind of striking feature for a very dark tone two quick shots of the finished model and i must say that i'm quite pleased with how the final result turned out okay guys and there we have it a miniature from apex legends painted up and ready for the tabletop like i said i followed the traditional uh, scheme for this miniature which i found a little bit difficult because there was so much black on it um which if obviously it's a, a kind of a harder color to work with um, an entire black bodysuit black cape black hair so trying to accent all the other colors to make the model pop in some ways was a little bit um tricky but i think i pulled it off i'm quite happy with the results that i did achieve and i hope you guys are as well if you like the video don't forget to give it a like obviously if you're not already subscribed to my channel it would mean the world to me if it took two seconds every day and hit that subscribe button ask me any questions you want in the comments below and i will get back to each and every one of you guys and if you want to support me even further there's links to things like my patreon below to give you access to a private discord server and an extra video every single week so you get 52 extra videos a year thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end i'll see you in the next video